La, la, la. You ready, big guy? Yeah. I'm like totally ready. Everyone in the city gets a shot at being a star in our singing competition. This stage is about to explode with major piggy power. Yo, Humpty, you're really funny looking. That's all right, cause I get things cooking. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady. Give my butterfly sugar, baby. Oh my gosh, look at her butt. Oh my gosh, look at her. Are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? If you want to become stars and win a hundred grand, then you better be ready to work harder than you've ever worked in your lives. Uh. Yes, that was very bad. Where's Johnny? He's not here. Where were you? I was at a rehearsal. Dad, I don't want to be in your game. I want to be a singer. How did I end up with a son like you? Music and all the moves and talk to you. I can sing, but I get so scared. Come on, be confident. Don't you want this? I'm back. What is going on here? Seize the moment. Try to freeze it and own it. Squeeze it and hold it. Cause we consider these minutes golden. Don't let fear stop you from doing the thing you love. You know what's great about hitting rock bottom? There's only one way left to go, and that's up. <laughs> My son! She's not even that good. Yeah, yeah, totally. I can't move. I'm terrified. Just see. Uh... <laughs> Why aren't you rehearsing? I'm through. They said I'm an intolerable egomaniac. I don't even know what that means. Hello, everybody. Hello, Risa Matthew. Thank you so much Good for morning. being at Build. Hi. We're so excited to have you. Thanks. Happy to be here. Perfect for the holidays, uh, this nice little present we have here with Reese and Matthew on the build stage. Everyone excited? I know I'm excited. Uh, we're also thrilled for this movie. This movie is so much fun. Uh, I actually went by myself in a theater full of children, and I have to tell you, it was one of the best experiences I've had in the theater this year. It was so exciting. All the kids loved it. Um, and let me tell you, Matthew, you make quite the physical transformation for this role. Uh, yeah, my ears you you got turn really into big. a koala. I can't believe it. Minus the Australian accent. Yes. <laughs> I yeah, mean, I did. Short but very big ears. Yes. Did you have any say in the characters that you would be playing? Did you guys get to, you know, have a say in the animals that you would be portraying on the screen, or was it kind of decided for you? It was decided. Yeah, it was decided. They presented us. They showed me pictures of what Rosita looked like, so I knew what she was going to look like. She I love her feet. Cute. I know her feet are tiny. Little feet. Yeah, and as we went along, uh, you know, we had like six, seven sessions over a year and a half to go record. And each time you go record, they would have um, more pictures of more characters, more realized along the way. Yeah, because I know, you know, in a lot of animated films, they try to sort of capture the way you look in your animated character. Did you guys have to do anything for that, or did you were you part of the process of them designing the character? Well, they have a camera on you in the booth. So the animators are looking for maybe consistencies of uh, vocal intonations or something, what you may do physically when that happens. And they'll grab some of them and give them to the character. Sure, some of them. Yeah. So what was it like uh, to be a part? I know this is your second animated movie. Yep. Reese, is this your first? Or have you done animated movies before? I did one about 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, why did you decide to do this movie? Uh, what drew you in? Uh, not only is it animated, I'm sure it's great for your kids. Uh, they can actually see a movie that you've been in. Uh, but th this script is great, too. Is that something that drew you in as well? Yeah. Um, I love the idea of playing this mom who has 25 kids. And <laughs> 25 piglets. <laughs> just 25 kids. And, um, and she just always wanted to be a singer, but she put her career to the side to take care of her husband and her kids. And I feel like a lot of moms can kind of relate to that and, and feeling kind of invisible. Um, at a certain point, so the singing competition gives her an opportunity to remember who she was before she was a mom. Yeah. And how about you, Matthew? What you, 
drew you to play Buster Moon? Well, I was looking to do some voiceover for animation for years and was not getting hired. Um, and uh, ended up, first one I did with this year was, in my career was Kubo. Mm -hmm. And then did this one. I mean, it, this came across the desk halfway through the read I was in. Um, I liked the character. I was excited to go work with Illumination. Um, and as you said, I got tired of answering the question of what's your kid's favorite film you've done? And I'm like, they haven't <laughs> seen any. I can't, there's none, not many they can see. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you have kids, you, they watch animated films, you get to look over their shoulder, you end up sitting down watching more animated films, you see what they find funny. And uh, yeah, I wanted to go do one that they could see and it's it helped me out in the household. <laughs> Yeah, uh, did your kids enjoy the movie? Have they seen it a bunch? Yeah, three, four so times. times. My kids have seen it so many times. I'm like, you sure you want to see it again? I'm like, yeah, we're going to see it again. How did they react when they were watching it and they could hear your voices on screen? Were you, like, kind of watching them while watching the movie? I kept looking at my little one, and my teenagers kept looking at him, too. It was so cute. That's kind of, that was the first movie he ever saw in a theater. And he still wakes up every morning and goes, hold on, I don't... I don't understand. You're, you're you, but you're a pig. But your voice is coming out of the pig. He literally doesn't understand. He doesn't? No. Every day he wakes up, makes me show him the trailer. He's like, but that's you. But, that's, but you're not a pig. Yeah. What so, makes sense? I know. So I finally just told him it was magic. There you go. Yeah, that's it is. It's magic. It is magic. It is magic. Yeah. It's movie magic. How about your kids? Were they like, Dad, that um, was awesome. Yeah, they like it a lot. Yeah. And they have a different favorite character almost every time they go see it. Um, my oldest son's favorite character is the, the snail who's in one scene, Fly Like the Wind. He's in one scene. My, my oldest son loves the snail. Wants the snail to be the main character. Yeah. Um, my youngest um, really has a, a thing for Mina and Rosita. And then uh, my daughter is the one who she tells me, maybe she's making me feel good. She goes, I like you, Popeye, Buster Aww. Moon. And she, of course, you gotta like Johnny, right? Yeah. Does everybody wanna have a crush on Johnny a little yes. bit? It's easy to have a crush on Johnny. Yeah. I think I have a crush on Johnny. <laughs> well, I definitely have a crush on Taryn Edgerton, that's for sure. He was here, actually, on the, um, for Build, and he sang for us. He was promoting a movie with Hugh Jackman, and he sang for us because Hugh said that he's a great singer. And then he's after an that, amazing singer. He's he will so blow good. people away. When I heard him, I was like, Cruder. "Who is that?" I thought it was Elton John. Yeah. Well, because when you're watching the movie, I was like, "Who is this? Who plays Johnny?" I had to look it up right away, and I was like, "Taron, guys, you guys know Taron Edgerton? He's in, in the, the Kingsman. He's in the, the Kingsman, Kingsman, and he was in, in Eddie, the Eagle. Uh, Eddie the Eagle. Uh, he's so good in this. And it's funny how you guys." kind of penetrate through your characters. You know what I mean? You could like see your personalities. Mm. Uh, do you guys have a favorite character yourself from Sing? I do. <laughs> it's Gunther. I'm fine. How are you? Nick Kroll. That's pretty good. Nick, Nick Kroll. Kroll. <laughs> Slays me every time. And I love it. I love it. How about you, Reese? I like, um, there's a secretary, Buster oh, secretary, so Mrs. Crawley. She has a glass eye that keeps popping out. So good. Voiced by our director. By Carl. our director. And she wears these orthopedic shoes that remind me of my grandma. <laughs> she walks really slow. So cute. It's so good. <laughs> she is one of my favorite characters for sure. There's so many great characters. In the, has anyone here seen the movie yet? Oh, we have a few. Favorite characters. I'm going to say you guys, duh. <laughs> you mean Rosita? Rosita. Yeah. Piggy Power. Buster Moon? <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Johnny will always be uh -huh. <laughs> When he sings that Sam Smith song, oof. Yeah, right? So good. Guys, what was it like? I know, uh, Matthew, you have a little bit of a singing uh, part in this. You sing Call Me Maybe. Call Me Maybe. With the wonderful Scarlett Johansson, um, who has an incredible voice, by the way. Scarlett. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, did you guys kind of, when you uh, did the voice work for this, were you together or you were alone in a, in a sound booth? No, that, everyone, <laughs> it's a great question because everyone asks it. And they think uh, that you do it together. We don't. We didn't. I mean, Reese and I were never in the same booth. I was never in the same booth with any of the characters. I don't believe anybody was. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's really not. A, we, we all saw each other and sort of met each other at the Toronto Film Festival when we premiered the film. 
And everyone goes like, oh, it must have been so much fun working together. And like, actually, just we just met. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet yeah. you. Never this met. is actually our second film that we're both in that we haven't had any interaction with each we other while we made it. We mud together. Yeah. And we did one, the closest we got in that film was in one scene, we were about 100 yards from each other, <laughs> looking at each other, waving across the street. And then we did sing together, and Never saw each not other. once. Not once. This is but, the first time we've spent together. It's we, these past eight minutes, and then yeah, the 12 more really that we have left. Each other now. <laughs> I know. I, I it turns out he's a time. great guy. This is, yeah. second, this is your second film to work with Reese. You guys must be old out at this. And actually, we're just kind of getting to know each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everyone assumes you guys are like best friends. Well, we are best friends. Yeah. I mean. Especially after the last eight minutes. <laughs> well, I saw you guys on the Today Show this morning, and Matt Lauer said that you, your southern accents sort of come out when you guys are together. Do you find that's true? <laughs> we also crunch ice. <laughs> Yeah, we, also, ice. we figured out that <laughs> we have we bring out our southern accents and then we also <laughs> we're ice chewers. We annoy our spouses by chewing ice. We think it's a southern thing. Both our spouses are annoyed by our ice chewing. So why are you chewing and we ice? think that's a southern thing. Yeah, and the same kind of ice. Yes. That crunchy soft sonic, ice. The sonic small ice. Pebble we ice. both had machines put we in have our ice house. Machine. It must be a southern ice thing. Ice is big in the south. Yeah. I'm like, we really what is it about crunching about ice that ice. really gets you guys okay. going? I don't know, it's a great pastime. I mean, how many times a week in the summer you just go, huh, I'm gonna take an hour to go crunch some ice. I'll see you later. Is there anything else uh, from your upbringing that you kind of, that people don't know about you that are, are little ticks or anything like that? That people don't know about you that you wanna share know right now. <laughs> do, you know, do people know who your brother is? What do your people know who my brother is? Yeah. What his, name, what his name is? Oldest brother's oh. name is Rooster. Rooster. Rooster, Rooster McConaughey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's his brother's name. <laughs> and I know Rooster. Rooster really. Do people well. know Rooster's son's name? What's Rooster's son's name? Rooster Miller Jr. Light. Miller Light. Miller Light. That is awesome. Rooster's favorite beer. Oh my god. That is awesome. But some people, you probably know that. You probably know. A lot of people know that. Anyway, what about you? Yeah, you, you know anything that about Rooster? Very you could quickly. Share? You see how I, I pass it to you. Anything I, people don't know about me? Uh, oh, I'm a very good hip-hop dancer. Ooh. A very good hip-hop dancer. Yeah. You know what the follow-up question to that no. is? <laughs> Show us some moves, Reese. <laughs> please. It's okay. Can we lay down a beat? Pop, lock, and drop? Yeah. Can we lay down a beat, please? <laughs> no, no, no. You can't do that to me. Uh, and I'm not singing Carly Jepsen to Call Me Maybe yeah. here, either. You can go to the film I'll for do, that. Yeah. My kids do that juju on the beat thing oh all the time. God. Is that the cutest thing ever? Juju on that beat? Can we get that going? Juju on that beat? <laughs> Guys, that was great. Chewing ice, hip-hop dancing, rooster, Miller Lite. We've learned so much about you in, the, <laughs> in that one minute. Uh, you know, speaking of animals, do you guys have a spirit animal? I was told by one of my children when they were two that my spirit animal is a penguin. A so penguin. I'm going with it. I don't know what that means. A penguin, why? I, there were two. He, did, he, he or she didn't really have an explanation. <laughs> they just said it, so I figured that just came to him. You're a penguin, Papa. Were you crunching ice at the time? I was crunching <laughs> ice at the time. <laughs> What's your spirit um, animal? I know what it is. Squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel. Yes. Think about it. <laughs> just think about it. I love it. Um, are there any other you know, parts of doing an animated movie that make it more enjoyable than perhaps filming uh, one where you're playing a real life person. I, I guess in the sound booth you could wear whatever you want, right? You can go in your pajamas. You could. It's so much more fun, just that you don't have the responsibility of. There's nothing precious about it. Right. You. I mean, you. It's you, kind of free. you press record. It costs nothing. Yeah. Twenty minutes of recording costs the same as twenty seconds. So press record, screw up. Yeah, uh, and get like you have to be kind of big. Too, which is sort of fun. You go to imagination quicker. Yeah. I think, and then if you're thinking like an eight-year-old, you're really probably getting really good at it. <laughs> Do they show you anything like while you're in there on screen that you could kind of look at while you're voicing the part? I didn't. No. Uh, well, sometimes I would see like a little sketch of her dancing or her in the grocery store or um, something like that. Were you guys super intimate? I know there's Tori Kelly's in this, Jennifer Hudson, 
these girls have like powerhouse voices, but I have to say, Reese, you have a wonderful voice. Uh, of course, Reese sang and won an Oscar for Walk the Line, just casual, you know? You're an Oscar winner too. I'm not an Oscar winner, but I, I enjoy being in your company. Uh, <laughs> Tell me about what, were you intimidated at all to sort of be included in this long list of actors who have amazing voices? Yeah, it was terrifying. Because <laughs> like Walk the Line was country music that I feel closer to country music, I, I guess because I grew up in Nashville. And then, but singing Taylor Swift songs and Katy Perry songs, like I was saying to Matthew, like you think you're really good in the car driving to the studio? <laughs> you're like, I got this, it's nailed it. <laughs> and then you get to the end of the session. And they were like, um, can you come back tomorrow? <laughs> are, you, are you free the rest of the week? Or It took me about 19 sessions to get those three songs. Um, but also, I, I hosted um, an event at the White House last year, and Tori Kelly had never heard of her, but she got up and she sang this insane, she sang some amazing song like Hallelujah. And I was like, oh my gosh, you made it. She goes like, yeah, I'm in sing with you. I had no idea. I was like, oh crap. Oh crap. I'm like the only non-singer. You are a singer, though. You are a singer, oh. yes. It did Scarlett's amazing, too. She has an original song in it that is my kid's favorite. That Free? Free, yeah. Set it all free. Did oh, she that's write her that? original song? She didn't write it, but um, it's like the only original song in the, in the movie, right. I think. Yeah, her voice is powerhouse, too. Oh my and God. her character is like a rock and roll hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> is she sort of like that, too? Is she like a rock and roll? Or you guys didn't really get to hang out with her, she, right? I just knew her personally. I miss her awesome. personally as well. She has the greatest voice, like just speaking voice. She talks like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the sexiest voice. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get to, when you shot Call Me Maybe, that scene, you weren't with Scarlett to, to do that? No, 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 no. I wasn't with Carly Jepsen either. <laughs> no. no, that just came out. I think Garth pulled that out. I didn't know I was going to be singing. I think I may have mentioned to him earlier. He tells me, and I don't remember this, he said that when I first came on, I was like, give me a song. Come on, let me sing. But I was always humming or mumbling or doing a second line New Orleans jazz beat somewhere. And then that day, he goes, hey, I got this idea that, you know, you talk to Ash and sing Carly Jepsen's pop song, Call Me Maybe, and she's going to be like, oh, uh, that's not me, but try it. And I was like, okay, press record. And so. And you did. Is that go. one of the songs that you play a lot in your house, Carly Rae Jepsen? No, it doesn't play that often <laughs> in my house, but obviously, if, 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 <laughs> if you were awake in the last 10 years, you've heard it quite a few times. Oh, yeah. I'm sure your kids have played it a couple times. Probably. Um, Reese, were your kids super excited for you to be in this and singing songs by Taylor Swift and Katy Perry? And were you around the house sort of practicing? Yeah, they got really tired of hearing me <laughs> sing Firework. <laughs> like, are you really singing that again? I was like, I have to. It's my job. Um, yeah. They, they had fun. And they loved the soundtrack. The soundtrack's really good. It's really good. And the, um, Harvey Mason was the musical producer, and he did um, Pitch Perfect, and he did um, Straight Outta Compton, and he was just incredible at giving me confidence and just, you know, and making me sound better and work harder, and he really helped me. Awesome. Were you guys fans of singing competition shows before getting involved in this movie? Do you guys watch, like, American <laughs> Idol or The Voice? Or? I cry at The Voice almost every time I watch it. <laughs> you do? I just, I, I do. There's something about people, like, having like the fear of trying to achieve something that I know that fear I know that feeling of like is everybody gonna laugh at me or am I are my dreams silly or I don't know I just get really emotional about it when they get chosen for their families too you know it's a it's a it's really hard to put yourself out there and be brave you know brave enough to try something like that mm -hmm. and the movie touches on that a lot uh, and how these people kind of you know, they haven't been showing off their talent and they've been going through their day-to-day -day life, like Rosita, who's a, a busy mom, um, and she concocts this amazing sort of design to keep her piglets busy so that she can follow her dreams. Um, is that something that's important for you and a, an important lesson for you guys to teach your kids is to follow your dreams? Sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm dealing with eight, six, and three-year-old right now, so... I mean, trust me, uh, I mean, if you're parents, you know what I'm talking about, and you surely do. As much as you think <laughs> you're going to guide them to be exactly, they become individuals, and it becomes, they, you see who they're going to be that's different than how you may be shepherding them very early on. Um, 
And so they have their interest. You know, they're not locked into what they want to do or what those dreams are yet, but they have their interest, and then we just try to lay as much uh, opportunity to, to achieve those or get, get them as possible at this point. And then, you know, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do until I was 21, and I'm still not sure at 47. I, really? <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I knew when I was you did. seven I wanted to be an actor. You did. Well, I wanted to be a country music singer or an actor. Or the so you were both. You got the so female president both. of the United yeah. States of America. Go win an Oscar doing both. <laughs> now, I knew I wanted to do that. It's interesting because your kids, I think the first lesson you learn as a parent is that you're not in control right. and that they're nothing like you. They're like their own individuals. And I don't know. You know, I've got, I've got two teenagers that are just trying to figure out what's the next step, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Um, yeah, and there's so many different things to do in the world. It's, yeah. it's a really interesting time. And you have another project coming up with HBO called Big Little Lies. Yeah. And uh, we are so, I'm so excited for that. And Matthew, you were on HBO before in a little show called True Detective. Yes, it was. Uh, have you given Reese any pointers on being on a HBO show? Because those things explode. Well, we, she just worked with Jean-Marc Vallée, yeah. who I worked with in Dallas Spires Club, and this is your second time? Yeah, yeah Wild, right? We directed yeah. Wild. Second time. Um, so that's one confluence we have. But also, my experience with working with HBO was outstanding, uh, just as far as them as a production company, every, the way they dealt with us creatively, when they came in, when they stayed back. I had a wonderful experience with them as a yeah. studio. And Matthew and Woody really broke that open, having like these two amazing actors in that limited series really changed the way that people see um, television and content, really. It kind of blurred the lines. It's like, is this a movie or is this, yeah. what is this? And I think that's sort of an interesting conversation that's going on now in, in media and entertainment. It's like, do things have to be movies or should they be on mobile? Should they be on Facebook Live? What is it, you know? So I think it really started that conversation. Yeah, we've seen the burst of limited series, you know, with the O.J. Simpson one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the night of, time, night manager. Uh, are you excited for uh, Big Little Lies to come out? I'm Can you so give us any excited. sort of, like, I know it's based on a book, but that cast is pretty stacked. <laughs> yeah, it's um, me and Nicole Kidman and uh, Shailene Woodley, Laura Dern, and Zoe Kravitz. And um, we're all moms of kindergartners, and one of the grown-ups kills another grown-up but you don't know who. You know in the very beginning that one of us kills another one of us, but you don't find out till the very end. And I just saw the end this week. It's so good. It's really Excited. scary. <laughs> and real. You know, it's about these women, moms, that are um, viciously protective of their children, and, um, but also have a lot of secrets in their lives. That's awesome. And you get to reunite with Jean-Marc Vallée, which is always cool and wild. Yeah. Uh, did you see Gilmore Girls when they did this whole wild thing? That yeah, was pretty that wild. Was, that was so sweet. That was really nice. Yeah, that was nice. That was very flattering. Tip. Well, I do want to get to some audience questions. So who's first? Good morning. I was wondering if you guys had any say in the design of your characters. I did not. No, they were, I think, I don't remember when I first saw the rendition of Buster Moon, but it was pretty early. And then each time I'd come back for another session in the studio, Garth, the director, would have a more realized version of Buster, and then started introducing me to other characters. And so by the last time I was in a recording session, I had all the characters in front of me, so you could understand the world better. Yeah. Who's next? Hi, thank you Over so here. much for coming. Um, my question is for Reese, and I know we're here to talk about the movie, and I can't wait to see it, but I'm a huge fan of your fashion and lifestyle brand, Draper James. And um, I was wondering if you could sort of talk a little bit about how that got started, was going into fashion and this lifestyle brand, something you always wanted to do, and sort of yeah. what that was like. Well, I've always loved clothes. <laughs> it's a huge part of my, my job. It's a huge part of my life. And, you know, getting to play different characters and work with some of the greatest costume designers in the world, I've always been inspired by fit and design. And, um, and then I grew up in the South, and I just... I, I started thinking about un unserved audiences and how women in the South are, love fashion, um, but designing into that idea of, of what is a Southern woman, you know? And they read Vogue and they read Elle, but um, somehow fashion sort of only exists on the coast. And I just wanted to kind of bring fashion to the, 
to the middle of the country. So it's been really fun. We have two stores now, one in Nashville and one in Dallas, and we're opening up in Kentucky next year. So thanks. Some great Christmas gifts on at Draper James, yeah. too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi. Reese, you were saying that you have to be a little big when you're doing the recording. Was it hard for either of you to get out of that sort of high energy state? Squirrel. <laughs> I'm always a squirrel. Penguin. I don't know what that means. Is it hard to get out of the high energy? Um, I mean, the sessions were, I mean, I remember literally breaking a sweat. It was kind of a workout. Um, no, I didn't, it wasn't hard. It was fun coming out of them. I think it felt a lot more like a kid coming out of them. Um, and it's part of what's so fun and easy about going around doing this and talking about it. Um, you know, when I said earlier, the more you think like an eight-year-old, the more for me, I was thinking like an eight-year-old, the more fun I was having, probably the better work I was doing. Um, there's something really unpretentious about it and, free, and freeing about it. Um, and it's so easy to screw up. And it's okay. More so here than I think in live action. I love the way you talk in the movie. I was just saying. <laughs> he talks like an old-fashioned movie star, sort of like that. But also like P.T. Barnum. He does. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, too. To me, yeah, it doesn't sound anything like Matthew. So I was actually surprised when I saw the movie. I was like, oh. <laughs> That's you? Yeah. It's, it's Buster Moon. Buster Moon. You do have a distinct voice, too, so it's hard mm -hmm. to, to miss that. Uh, we have time for one more right here. Hi, I can't wait to see this. Two of my favorites. Um, if you guys were to enter a song competition, what would you sing? I mean, I'm, I'm still going to do John Mellencamp's Pink Houses. Ah. Can you give us a little taste of that, Matthew? <laughs> no. I'll do, I'll do it in my next you knew, film. You knew Pay that to go was see coming. It. Sing two. Um, I would definitely, it's all, it's any kind of Dolly Parton. Like 9 to 5 or Jolene or something like that. That's awesome. Well, guys, you can hear them sing, not here, but in Sing, uh, which comes out December 21st. Christmas? 21st, right? is it? Yeah. 21st. Yep. Okay. Uh, guys, go see it. It's so much fun. Uh, if you have kids, take your kids. If you don't have kids, take yourself. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you all.